Coming up on WUFT's First at Five, three people are indicted for a murder in Gainesville, including two teenagers. What authorities say led to the killing? Plus, and this is not something that we can sustain if the University of Florida uh, makes the kind of cut that they have proposed. Gainesville Mayor Harvey Ward says UF is cutting funding for the RTS transit system in half, while the university says this is a misunderstanding. And the Newberry Charter School debate continues. What city commissioners have to say about the possible conversion. First at Five starts right now. First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The University of Florida program funding half the budget of the city's regional transit system began 25 years ago. This is WT's First at Five. I'm Chris Will. And I'm Bailey Cornick. The city claims UF now plans to scale back, but the university says otherwise. WUFT's Jared Titel joins us now. Jared, the mayor says the university is cutting back its funding by a significant amount. Yes, Bailey, the city of Gainesville says UF is proposing to cut funding for the city's regional transit system by 50 percent. Gainesville Mayor Harvey Ward said the university provides 68 percent of RTS riders while paying, quote, 48 percent of the bill. Without this budget, he said, the number of RTS buses and riders in the city will significantly decline. But the university maintains this is all a, quote, misunderstanding. What they're asking for now is to pay 25% instead of 48% of the bill. That is not a sustainable action for the system. Following Mayor Ward's statements, UF Associate Vice President of Communications Steve Orlando refuted the city's claims. He stated, quote, there seems to be a major misunderstanding on the city's part. The University of Florida has made no announcements and believed that our good faith talks were ongoing. We're committed to doing what's right for our community and students. The city claims UF will begin funding RTS in monthly installments at the start of the next fiscal year. Payments would come in $570,000 a month, dropping the annual budget to $6.8 million. RTS receives annual funding as part of a UF-sponsored program that requires RTS provide free and unlimited fare for UF students and faculty. This year's budget grossed about $13.7 million. One RTS rider said the buses can be prone to running late and he fears potential budget cuts could exasperate the pattern. I think it definitely is a bad look for me um, because with less buses, I feel like the problem will get worse. Orlando claimed that the university wasn't made aware of the press conference and claimed that they asked the city for transparent data on RTS operating costs. However, they said no data has been shared yet and hopes to continue talks with the city once this information is received. Reporting live outside the RTS administration building, Jared Titel, WUFT News. One adult and two teenagers aged 14 and 15 were indicted for first degree murder Monday. Dequan Frenet, Michael Lawson, and Kimmy and Lee were arrested in February for their involvement in the murder of Caleb Fries last month. The Gainesville Police detectives determined Fries was a victim to a robbery that led to his unlawful killing. Frenet will be charged with tampering with physical evidence, shooting into an occupied vehicle, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Lawson will face the additional charge of possession of a firearm by a minor. All three men are detained in the Alachua County Sheriff's Office Department of the Jail without bond on first-degree murder charges. Alachua County Commissioners are holding a public hearing about redeveloping a gas station that causes what neighbors say are major traffic issues. As of 4 p.m., the Board of Commissioners were still discussing the Chevron on Newberry and Tower Roads. Some residents say the gas station near the Oaks Mall causes extra traffic next to I-75. No decisions are being made from today's meeting. It's simply for public comment. You must be in person to participate in the meeting. We're looking over Payne's Prairie right now. It seems like it's pretty overcast outside. There are some clouds in the sky, but no rain quite yet. We're going to see some severe weather hit North Central Florida in a few days. WUFT's Julia Haley is here to tell us about the cold front that's on the way and when it's getting here. That's right, Bailey. Cloudy skies and showers are on the rise, but not yet here in Gainesville. We have those showers mostly around the Panhandle and westward where we have that active weather. But here in Gainesville, we are staying pretty calm today overall, especially in north central Florida. Take a look at our campus cam. We have those clouds. It's almost overcast. You can't even see any blue sky in sight. 80 degrees outside of campus and those temperatures are staying above average. 80 for Ocala and even 81 for the villages. 82 Crystal River. Definitely 
warm for this time of year. And for this evening, we're going to stay warm, a little bit breezy, and then the, the, those lows are going to reach the lower 60s. So we'll track those showers for you and we'll let you know how much longer this above average high will last coming right up. The Newberry City Commission met last night, but the controversial Newberry Charter School initiative wasn't on the agenda. WFT's Dara Getter was there, and now she's joining us live from the newsroom. Dara, the eclipse put a dent in yesterday's outturn. Yeah, I spoke with city leaders, and right now, mainly everyone is waiting intently on the outcome to find out what's next for education in their city. In Newberry, the main topic right now seems to be the charter school conversion vote. Before the Newberry City Commission meeting, Mayor Jordan Marlowe and Commissioner Mark Clark commented on the community matter. There's really nothing to lose. There's really nothing to risk. The only thing to fear is fear itself. And once we can overcome that, we can do some great things for our children. I personally don't get in it. You don't see me on the social media platform with it. If the people elect the schools to become a charter school and they vote this in, me as an elected member, I will do my job. The focal points of the commission meeting were initiatives like Child Abuse Prevention Month in April and the Great American Cleanup Day on April 26. The biggest news from the meeting was the commission's approval of a construction contract for parking improvements at Easton Sports Complex. The project will create 42 new parking spots and improve stormwater drainage. And the brand new inclusive playground is almost complete. And we will get it done now too. Uh, we have the money to do it, so we'll get it done. And with that, the meeting adjourned. The Easton Park Improvement Project cost over half a million dollars and commissioners say it's a long time coming. Voting for the future of Newberry schools will continue at each school tomorrow and Friday until 7 p.m. Live in the newsroom, I'm Dara Getter, WUFT News. Residents in the city of Alachua are hitting the polls today to elect a new commissioner. Jennifer Blaylock and Eric L. Ford are running for the fifth seat on the city commission board. The term is three years long and will end in April 2027. Shirley Green-Brown was the only qualifier for the fourth seat and the race will not appear on the ballot. The polls will be open until 7 p.m. After going paw for paw in several rounds in the Florida Sheriff's Association K-9 March Madness competition, Marion County Sheriff K-9 Rex will not be advancing to the final round. Deputies thank voters for their support throughout the competition. Rex made it to the semifinals and despite losing, gained more than 10,000 votes in the round. In total, over 500,000 people have voted in the competition's poll. Dogs from Manatee, Marion, Walton and DeSoto County were among the dogs competing. Coming up on WUFT News First at Five, one North Central Florida organization celebrates 50 years of helping domestic violence survivors in the community. That's right, stay tuned to find out how they're raising money to keep providing services to those who need them when we return. You're watching WUFT TV News. The Gainesville Domestic Violence Agency is celebrating 50 years of service to the community. To mark the occasion, the organization is hosting a community art exhibit featuring some of the survivors they have helped over the years. WT's Madison Ginsburg is live in the studio with the other reason they're hosting this unique exhibit. Peaceful Paths is working to raise $150,000 to help with the services they provide to treat domestic violence survivors and educate on the dangers of dating violence in North Central Florida. They're raising the money through their Hope Works art show that is happening right now. It's a milestone in any organization's history to reach that 50 year mark. And for us, it's particularly special. Peaceful Paths is celebrating five decades of combating domestic violence in North Central Florida. And they're looking to continue their work for another 50 years through fundraisers like the Hope Works event. Artwork is showcased from professional artists, donors, supporters, and survivors. And that's that sense of an emotional connection, that sense of hope um, that I think art as a, as a healing modality gives everyone. Executive Director Teresa Beachy says the organization was started in 1974 by a small group of feminists who were concerned by the lack of resources for sex assault and domestic abuse survivors in the community. Our vision really is to have an organization that's dedicated to safety, support, and a path to self-sufficiency for every survivor and their children that walk through the door. The National Domestic Violence Hotline says 24 people per minute are victims of intimate partner violence, and that's just one of the alarming statistics of this crime. And if you look at the statistics, one in three women in their lifetime will be impacted by, by domestic violence and one in eight men. 
Domestic violence is even reaching the area's young people. The American Psychological Association says that 19% of teens are experiencing dating violence. Youth Services Director Crystal Sorrow says it's important to teach them what the red and green flags are in a relationship. The younger we can educate about consent, about healthy boundaries, about what some of those red flag behaviors are, um, the more that we can help people and the more that people will realize 78 that... 78 works of art are being shown at the open house that you can see until May 5th. Peaceful Paths organizers say they treat roughly 2,500 people at the center and another 8,000 young people are trained on violence prevention. Live in the studio, Madison Ginsburg, WUFT News. Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill today to further crack down on porch pirates. DeSantis signed HB 549, which reduces the threshold requirement for third-degree grand thefts. The law will go into effect on October 1st. If you have a suspended license or any outstanding fines, Alachua County has a program to help legally get you back on the road. Operation Greenlight is happening now. From April 8th to 12th, you have the opportunity to get back on the road and even save up to 25% in collection fees. Just show up to any Alachua County courthouse in person or call between 8.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. to discuss paying in full or setting up a payment plan. You're going to need your umbrella this week. We'll track those showers by the hour on the other side of the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. We're tracking some showers near the panhandle, mostly light and scattered, but this is just a preview of what we'll see a little bit later this week. Here in Gainesville, though, staying pretty calm overall, just with those cloudy skies. Look, you can't even see the blue sky, mostly gray outside, 81 degrees and very calm outside as well. Temperatures are sitting in the 70s and the 80s. This is above average for this time of year, 80 for O'Callaghan, 80 for the villages, 82 for Crystal River and this is an increase from what we saw yesterday. So that sunshine is definitely keeping us warm. So great day to go out while you still can. Five degrees increase in Gainesville, four degrees in Ocala. And tonight our hour by hour showing those cloudy skies are going to last ahead of a front and those temperatures are going to drop into the 60s as those clouds last. We will be staying warm though, especially with those lows 61 Gainesville and 62 for Ocala, but no fog though due to that wind for winds day. Those highs are in the 80s again, 85 for Gainesville, and that southerly wind is helping to keep us warm. So definitely another great day to get outside before we have those showers. Those showers are ahead, so it's going to start around the panhandle and we'll see that slight risk and even a marginal risk toward the panhandle. But around us, staying calm for Wednesday into Thursday, though, we have those showers. You can see about two rounds of showers right now, and that'll hit Gainesville around the afternoon. So you want your umbrella with you, especially as this front moves through, and that leads into Thursday where we have that isolated risk and even a scattered risk in our area, and we're mostly focused on those damaging winds and even a flood potential as that rain makes its way into our area. That rain even amounting to two inches in Perry and just about one inch here here in Gainesville. So as much as we're looking at rain, we're also looking at the wind. But as that cold front moves out, we get sunny skies. Perfect for the weekend. And speaking of the weekend, we have the orange and blue game. So it'll be a great weekend to go cheer on the Gators. Make sure to bring your sunglasses, though, and also your sunscreen, especially as we're expecting those sunny skies due to a high pressure system. And take a look at your seven day. We drop into the 70s and rising even to the 90s by next week. The Florida Gators softball team is coming off one of their toughest tests to date this season against the number six LSU Tigers. See how Florida fared in the rubber match of this SEC heavyweight battle last night and more after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. I'm Jack Meyer and it's time to talk some Tuesday sports. We're starting off today's roundup in Tallahassee as the Florida Gators baseball team gears up for a top 25 faceoff with the Florida State Seminoles. After picking up their first midweek win in over a month against the Florida A&M Rattlers last Tuesday, the Gators were swept by the previously last place Missouri Tigers this past weekend. Florida dropped 18 spots in the latest D1 baseball rankings as a result, falling from number six in the country to number 24. Things won't get any easier for the Gators this evening as they prepare to face a Seminoles team that has leapfrogged to number 10 in the country this week. In the first two matches between these squads earlier in the year, Florida State scored 12 and 14 runs, respectively, en route to a pair of dominant victories. 
Florida will look to avoid being swept on the season tonight by the Seminoles for the first time since 2002. Redshirt junior Ryan Slater will get the start on the mound today for the Gators with first pitch set for 7 p.m. Making our way back, back down into Gainesville, the Florida Gators softball squad saw much more success in their recent action. The Gators are coming off a top 10 showdown against the LSU Tigers in which they narrowly came away with the series victory on Monday night. Florida got off to a shaky start in the evening. After only recording two hits in the first five innings, the Gators found themselves facing a 5-1 deficit entering the bottom of the sixth frame. But just when it looked like the game was out of hand, junior Kendra Falvey blasted a three RBI triple into left field to tie the game up at 5-5. Five five. Coach Thomas actually, he, I'm a visual person, so Coach Thomas like came and looked at me and he was like, you're going to hit the ball, you see those cameras, you're going to hit the ball dead center. And then like that's all I thought about was just find the bottom half of the ball and go. So when I connected with the ball, I was like, oh wow, I'm going. And then when I saw the center fielder mess up, I was like, I'm going three. The Gators eventually walked the game off in extra innings after redshirt singer Skylar Wallace reached first base on a drop dart strike, allowing junior Brooke Bernard to score the winning run. Coming fresh off of a series win over a top ranked SEC foe, it was safe to say the hype in the Florida locker room was at an all time high. The Gators will return to Katy Seashore Presley Stadium tomorrow night for a midweek matchup with the USF Bulls. First pitch is set for 6 p.m. Staying put on the diamond, yesterday was an eventful one in the world of high school baseball. The Oak Hall Eagles came away with a narrow 5-4 win over the Gainesville Hurricanes, while the Chiefland Indians dominated the Williston Red Devils en route to a 10-0 run rule victory. Meanwhile, the Trenton Tigers only recorded two hits in a 5-0 loss to the Swanee Bulldogs. Tonight will feature plenty of action on the high school front as well. First up, the Santa Fe Readers will take on the Columbia Tigers, with first pitch set for 6.30 p.m. Later in the evening, the PK Young Blue Wave will travel to Bronson High School to take on the Eagles while the Buholz Bobcats will play host to the Village's Charter Buffalo. Both of those games are slated to start at 7 p.m. Now, March Madness might have ended over a week ago, but the madness was still on full display in last night's NCAA Men's Championship. In the battle between the one seeds, the Yukon Huskies and Purdue Boilermakers kept it close in the first half of their championship matchup. But in spite of a 35-point outing from Purdue's Zach Eady, the Huskies fully took over in the second half en route to a 75-60 victory. UConn is now the first school to win back-to-back -back national championships since Florida cut down the nets in 2006 and 2007. Wrapping things up back in the Sunshine State, Buholz High School is slated to host its first ever girls flag football game tonight. The Bobcats will take on the Leon Lions in the playoffs in the Class 2A District 2 quarterfinals this evening. We might be seeing a future Olympian on that field for all we know with the flag football coming to the Olympics in 2028. Well, good wow. luck to the ladies tonight. Hopefully, they're they're getting some practice in before. Absolutely. Yeah, congrats to them. Hopefully, we are seeing them on the field in L.A. in a, a couple years from now. Yeah, Julia, what does the weather look like for tonight's game? The weather is great for tonight's game. Of course, the sun is going to be covered by some clouds, but we're staying warm and we're staying dry. Temperatures dropping from the 80s into the 60s, and then those clouds will stay overnight. But by the time you wake up, we'll once again have a warm and sunny day. Some clouds, though, but by Thursday, you'll see some showers and then we'll rise into even the 90s by Tuesday with sunny skies and also for the orange and blue game you'll see the 80s as well sunny skies overall thank you so much for joining us we're back here tomorrow for another edition of first f5 but your north central florida news is always on at wuft.org and on all of our social media platforms have a good night